everyone, Princess Alethea Contis here with my lovely friend Princess Tempest. Hello. Today we're going to rant about the fairy tale, A Colony of Cats. This is another fairy tale from Andrew Lang's Crimson Fairy Book. This fairy tale will also be featured in Trickster Aussie. That was like sneak preview. Wow. Way to tease people, well, I don't Princess have the final Alethea. Cover yet. After the whole fiasco with Hero, I'm kind of scared to do a cover reveal anymore. Without further ado, A Colony of Cats. Once upon a time, back when animals could speak, which apparently is any time in a fairy tale, really, <laughs> let's be honest, there lived a house of cats. This wasn't even just sort of some house that had some cats. No, the cats owned that house. They had so much money they could even afford a servant. Mm -hmm. Some of the unfortunate women in town would often say, Fine, I'll just go live with the cats, which I guess was maybe a saying in this town in Italy. This fairy tale is Italian. They literally would go live with the cats and clean for them and cook for them and, and uh, apparently not enjoy it. It was a high turnover. So there was a girl named Lazinia. Lazinia lived with her mother and her sister. The mother was a widow and the mother and older sister really treated Lazinia like crap. Lazinia was the good sister and she said, fine, I'm gonna go live with the cats. And she did. The cats welcomed her into their house. She learned how to cook for them. She learned how to clean for them. She learned how to, whatever. Rub them on the belly exactly three times and not four. Exactly. Whatever it was, Lazinia could handle it. She did such a great job that when Father Gatto, Papa Gatto, came to visit. Now, Papa Gatto did not live in this house with the cats. He actually lived in like a barn on the hill, but he would come down from on high to see how things were going. She said, you know, I, I really miss home. I, I would like to go home. Papa Gatto said, fine, you have done such a wonderful job. Come with me. In the basement, there was a, a vat of oil and a vat of gold. And he why said, you have that in the basement? So why would cats have a vat of gold at all, period? But there you go. He said, would you like to be dipped in the vat of gold or the vat of oil? Lazinia was like, uh, oil? Probably because she knew it would come off. The cat said, then I shall dip you in gold. She gets dipped in gold in this giant urn of gold and comes out and she's covered in gold. Her skin is gold. Her clothes are gold. She can't even remove her clothes. She can't everything clothes is gold. She's like a statue, but she can move and everything is gold. He says, now go home, follow these specific instructions when the donkey brays, look away from him, turn left, hop on one foot, like all these crazy things, <laughs> and go home. So she goes home, the donkey brays, she turns away from the donkey, and she gets this beautiful star that appears on her head, also not removable, and goes home. Her sister Peppina and her mother are instantly jealous of all of the gold. She pulls these be. things out of her pockets. The things in her pockets are allowed to come out of her pockets, but the skirt can't come off her as hard as they try to disrobe her. They are so jealous that Peppina says, I am going to go work for these cats. The mom says, that's a great idea. Such <laughs> terrible people. <laughs> it's true. So Peppina goes to the cats and guess what happens? He's mean. She kicks them. She kicks them. She kicks them. She abuses them. Uh, Some of the kittens die. It's horrible. It's, it, it's really, really bad. She's really terrible at this. Not, not a good person. When she says, I can't do this anymore. I gotta leave. So Papa Gato comes and says, we have a vat of gold and a vat of oil. What would you like to be dipped in? And she says, gold, please. <laughs> no gold for you. She gets dipped in oil. He also gives her the specific instructions she needs to follow when she goes home. So she gets dipped in oil, rolled in ashes, <laughs> goes home, hears the donkey bray. Instead of turning away from the donkey, she turns towards the donkey and a giant donkey's tail sprouts from her forehead. And really, isn't that what we all want in life is a giant donkey tail in the middle of our forehead? <laughs> no, it would be hard to see. Hmm. Keep flies off your face. <laughs> Poor Pepina, right? Although she kind of deserved it because she was a cat kicker. We had a kitten killer. While Pepina's been gone, while she's been off not taking care of the cats very well, her sister's been sitting in windows and the prince rides by and he's like, check out that beautiful woman in that window. I want to marry that woman. Mother's like, whatever, fine. But then Pepina comes home. And wash him. it off. But the donkey's tail does not come it, off. It but the oil off. and the ashes, gone. Right. But it's still, it's a mess. And she's like, man. And her mother's like, uh, the prince is coming for your sister tomorrow. Pepita probably is just like, what? She said, well, the bride has to wear a veil, right? He won't know till the last minute who he's actually marrying. So they dress Pepina up in the white dress and the veil. 
that covers her forehead. Prince picks her up in a carriage. Meanwhile, poor Lazinia is in a well. Her mother oh, dropped right. her they, down a well. They lowered her into the well. Like, I, she first of all, go? Lazinia is, how is she not stronger than her mother for this to happen? Her mother literally is just like, come with me, get down this well. And also covered in gold. I mean, if I was covered in gold, I would just be... Right. And run away. Right. Uh, Lizinia. She's not a cat kicker. The cats sort of line the streets as the carriage goes by, and they're meowing and yelling and singing uh, the song that says something to the effect of, Lizinia's in the well, you have Pepina. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> they say, what are these Grimalkins talking about? And they lift the veil and ha. There's a chick with a donkey Wrong tail coming sister. out of her forehead. It's terrible. So... Everything gets fixed, and Lazinia and the prince live happily ever after. The end. The end! Here's why Tempest and I think this is 100% bunk. Not the oil, not the gold, not the prince and the donkey's tail on the forehead, no, no. It's this one line from the introduction that says, Not only were they very difficult to please about the housework, but most women quickly tired of living alone with only cats as companions. That's a lie. Fairy tale. Thank you for joining us for another of Princess Alethea's fairy tale rants. Princess Tempest, I'm gonna miss you so much. I will miss you too. I will miss all of you guys as well. But I hope that you have fun out there in Princess Princessy land and you come back and hear the rest of the fairy tales. We have two more episodes until the season finale. So, see you next week. Love you guys. <laughs> no gold for you. Fairy tale.